welcome to beautiful sunny Crete in Greece. My wife and I have escaped the UK lockdowns for a little bit. This is one of the travel corridors that have opened up. We're here for just under a week, just getting away from the whole COVID situation and lockdown in the UK. Not a spearing holiday at all, but I've thrown in the travel kit as usual, just in case. And the plan tomorrow is to get up early and see if I can go for a little bit of a shore dive. Obviously it's the Mediterranean, very difficult conditions, very hard to shoot fish here or anything really, but it's always nice to get out in some really clean, warm water. It's about 25, 26 degrees, so roasting hot. Excited to jump back into a three mil, but I'll see you guys in the morning. First dive here this morning, got up a little bit early. Sun's just come up about 20 minutes ago, hoping for Dentex. That's why I've come out earlier today than I usually would on a trip like this. Just decided to commit the morning to a dive. So gonna see how I go as expected. Probably not going to find anything, but it's not gonna stop me trying. The water's quite warm at the moment. So I've just got the three mil suit here. I haven't really worn that thing in about 18 months. Dive ours as usual. And I've got the Rife Euro travel gun with two bands. Hopefully that will do the trick today. Water looks fairly clean. I'm expecting about 20 meters visibility today. Greece gets super busy with boats in the summer, so it's paramount to have a float and a flag whenever you're diving around here or anywhere for that matter. Those rocks are sharp. There's a lot of urchins down there, so if you're over in the Mediterranean, remember to watch out for the urchins. I haven't got spike today, but I just saw a few black spiky dots down there and I remember the pain that I had in Croatia when I stood on one of those. Not fun. Let's see what the meds got for us today. felt like an age since I'd been in water this clear. I was only in seven meters of water and something caught my eye on the bottom. A Mediterranean moray eel. As I swam out further, I came across some patches of seagrass. You see this stuff everywhere in the Mediterranean and it's a great place to ambush fish. From the surface in 12 meters of water, I was reminded why I needed to be vigilant of the boat traffic. This turtle had suffered a major trauma to its shell, most likely a boat strike. I wouldn't normally touch a turtle like this, but I genuinely thought this one was dead on the bottom. Thankfully, this guy was just having a rest on the bottom out of the current, which was seemingly getting stronger. that turtle from the surface there it had a big mark on its back so I thought it might have been dead or injured by a prop strike so I gave it a little you know tap just to make sure it was still alive or if it was to find out if it was dead but it seemed all pretty healthy but it had a serious bust up on its back there. I drifted across to a drop off which looked incredible but the current was still picking up. It looked too good not to have a quick peek. There were small fish looking skittish and a labyrinth of holes. I hoped there would be a groper somewhere over that edge. I 
I spotted some Sargos way off in the distance, but I'd already blown my cover in this visibility. Unfortunately, out there where I wanted to dive and started fighting some cool looking ground, the current was just absolutely ripping it up. Like it was, it was hard to hold onto the float without the drop weight getting pulled off the bottom. That's just not what I'm into while I'm out here. And everyone's got to know their limits and I'm just not comfortable sitting out there in the current holding onto my float trying to dive. So I've headed back in shallower. There's a mixing of the water temperatures here, the thermocline. You can clearly see these ripples in the water as you get a bit closer into the shallow. So I'm not sure if that's conducive to fish, but I might have a little bit of a sticky beak out here where the current's not so savage. Not ideal, but that's the way it goes when you don't know these areas. You just gotta go with your gut instinct and if you're not comfortable with the situation, get out of that situation. I tried the technique of crawling, stopping and waiting. The Italians call this technique a guato. I repeated this a few times during the dive and then I saw a nice ledge where I could hide myself just a little bit better. By now the sun was high in the sky and I decided to call it a morning. Well, that was quite a fun little morning dive there. No fish to shoot, but it was great to see that turtle, even though it had what appeared to be a boat strike on its back, moray eel, some two spot sargos, single spot sargos. I saw a little golden groper there as well as a few little dusky groper. But I think I just wasn't the most comfortable out there that I could have been because when I got out in that current and it started taking me and I, I kind of just had a little bit of a, you know, a panic attack as such because you think, crap, what's, what's happening? I don't know this area and you want to get out of the situation very quickly. And I just felt like right now I needed to say to someone out there that it's okay to be uncomfortable in the water and have those feelings of anxiety and panic because I've suffered with those for the last 10 years and only in recent times I've learned how to manage those and recognize exactly what's going on when those moments hit and you know you're not broken there's nothing wrong with you it's perfectly normal and particularly us men out there don't really like talking about our feelings so I'm probably going out on a limb here doing this but you know talk to someone about it and if you don't want to talk to someone a really great starting point would be to listen to Tim Kaverman's podcast on the Noobs Bureau podcast really great stuff in there about anxiety dealing with it when diving so yeah I just thought I'd say anyone out there that's suffering with that sort of thing you're not broken you can get over it you can learn how to manage it and still have a great day diving the sun in Greece is no joke at all it's 9.30 in the morning and super bright, super hot sun. So I think I'm going to retire for the morning, have some breakfast, have a bit of a siesta this afternoon. I am on holiday, so I don't know if I'm actually gonna dive anymore the rest of this trip. I'll just sort of play it by ear. We've got a couple more days here, my wife and I, but not too concerned. I'm just happy to get out amongst the sunshine and the Mediterranean. Just jumped off out of the hotel, literally walked 200 meters out of my hotel room and jumped off the bricks here. So not expecting much, but got to give it a go. This patch of seagrass harbored a profusion of bait fish. This was looking very promising for a larger predator. After a brief wait, two small groper came out to say hello, but too small to consider shooting. At least I was on the right type of ground.
Back on the surface, a shoal of these trevally-like fish passed underneath us. I've seen these in Malta before, but I'm not really sure exactly what they are. So if you know, please leave me a comment so I can find out what they are. Once again, bait fish acting skittish on the edge of a drop-off, further investigation was mandatory. I attempted to swim away from the drop-off when I was surfacing, so I didn't spook anything that was hanging just over the edge. This drop was already alive with fish and that cave in front of me was looking rather auspicious. Another moray eel to my right just there. Off in the distance there was a huge shoal of two-spot seabrim and even a lionfish on this monolithic rock. I just didn't want to leave. What an awesome dive that was. Definitely the most fish I've ever seen in the Mediterranean, just the bottom covered with those little two-spot sargos there. That was really cool to see, and considering it's the middle of the day, it's, um, yeah, it's encouraging to know that there might be something there at a better time of the day. Dive to about 20 meters there, have my wife looking after me, which is good. And uh, yeah, I might move into the shallows a bit now and see if I can find anything else, but yeah, positive signs. I uh, saw a couple of little groper down there as well. Hopefully sunset or sunrise might be a bit better of a time to dive, but yeah, beautiful conditions. Just no current in this spot. That's the main thing, no current. A few days later, I went for another dive during the day to scout out areas to dive on our final evening. I was hoping the late afternoon would prove more productive for larger predators like Groper, and of course, Dentex. Final afternoon here in Greece, it's 6.30. I'm gonna try and catch the last hour and a half of sunlight. Hopefully there's more predators out amongst this sort of lighting. Hopefully find a Dentex or a Sargo or anything really. I've seen a few fish earlier today. I saw some Sargo, saw a couple of little curious groper. A lot of fish life here, but just nothing really that big. But man, it's just so nice to be in clear, warm water. It's 27 degrees today and three mil suit is more than enough. I found this drop off to sand that had many holes earlier in the day. Unfortunately, no groper were hanging out here. I was really expecting one just to pop its head out near those bait fish there. With just minutes of sunlight left, I had time for one last dive. Would this be the one? The 
quest continues for the notorious Dentex, yet again. Oh, crazy beautiful. No fish today, but with a view like that, who really cares? I realized over this past week, I dived five times. I had five different times that I dived and spearfished and I didn't see a fish that I could have shot. It's really easy to straight away put that down as it's the Mediterranean, it's fished out, there's too many people, there's no dentex. Yeah, it is overfished and there's a lot of spearfishing pressure. Well, I actually met a local dentex master here, Anthony Esty. He has a fantastic YouTube channel. He shoots a phenomenal amount of Dentex in very shallow water, four to eight meters, and that is not something that's very common in the Mediterranean, let me tell you. Most of the people will tell you you have to dive 30, 40 meters to find a Dentex or even see one, but how is Anthony doing it in such shallow water? It's because of his hunting technique. Now, Anthony kindly offered me some advice. He said, this is a few of the spots that I've seen Dentex before early morning, late afternoon, that's the best. I've dived some of these spots over the last couple days, haven't seen so much as a scale of a Dentex when I've been out there. Now, is that because I'm, you know, the fish are gone, they're, they're not there, or is it because of my technique? He shot a Dentex in between the days that I was diving at some of these spots. Now, it's easy for me to say, oh, you know, he scared them off or whatever, but if you take a look at it from a different perspective that I may not be as good as I think I am. What I mean by that is technique will always trump your diving ability as far as your breath hold and your depth. Anthony has some sinus issues and so it restricts him to very shallow water. Thus he has become a master at hunting Dentex in very shallow water and he's very successful. He shoots a lot of these fish and you know what? When I come here and I talk to Anthony and I learn things like that, I realize how far I have to come and how much there is to learn about hunting fish more so than diving deep. And if in a place like the Mediterranean, you can employ a technique and a hunting style and observation that allows you to shoot one of the most prized fish in the world in five, six or seven meters of water, you need to listen to those people and realize that hunting technique is the biggest thing that will get you fish in this sport. Not breath hold, not depth, focus on your hunting and you'll shoot way more fish. I don't come to the Mediterranean to shoot a lot of fish. I come here to learn. I hope you enjoyed this video guys, even if there wasn't any fish. And if you want to see some Dentex getting shot, head over to Anthony's channel because it is phenomenal. See you on the next one.